Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Matt, Client Success Manager for White House Custom Color. And before we get started with our friend Rod Evans today, just want to uh, make a few announcements. So um, if you're joining us today for the first time, make sure and subscribe to the WHCC YouTube channel. You're going to get notified of awesome events like this that are going on. Plus you'll be up to date on all the fun things that uh, we're posting on our YouTube channel right now. Uh, there's some really awesome redesign series that are going to be coming out very shortly. So make sure and hit that subscribe button. If you're not um, following us on Instagram, make sure and do that as well. It's at WHCC Pro. Uh, we're constantly posting um, fun new products and educational pieces and all the great things to check out at WHCC Pro on Instagram. And um, definitely, if you haven't visited WHCC.com lately, make sure and do that. The website's new. There is tons of information, details, new products. Um, all the things that you need to, do, need to know about WHCC are, are on the website, so make sure and do that. And one last reminder, um, while Rod is doing his program today, um, if you have questions, make sure and put them into the chat and we will definitely be hitting those live as they're coming in. So I'll try to remember to remind you to put those in, but if not, make sure and put those questions in the chat and we will get them over to Rod. So. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm today. so excited to be here. You know, when I when I think about um, the people that were instrumental in like my early career, and so many people that you know that I traveled with and learned from, you are at the top of that list. Oh, that's very kind. Um, <laughs> so it's it's amazing to have you sitting here with us today and still innovating, still original, still pushing um, the level of your artistry after being in the industry for 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> so where, where does that energy come from, Ron? It comes from, <laughs> I just love what I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really, and I, and I love who I'm serving, and I feel like there's a purpose to everything that I do. So, and that resonates deeply within me. So that keeps you motivated, even during some tough times in your business, and your you know, life, all those things. You have to have this really deep sense of purpose. Definitely. So give us just a little bit of your background here. Um, you're located in? Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Perfect. It's about a city of about 200,000. It's really progressive, really growing. Okay. Awesome. And then the style of your business, are you focused on seniors, families? What, what are your main um, niches that you work so in? So those are my two main niche, niches is that I do families um, and uh, typically wall portraits for family. Yep. And then I do high school seniors also. Okay. So, and then I also do some headshots because yep. I just like doing headshots. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, it just naturally just come to me. So I'm like, I'm not turning them away. It's 10 minutes and it's Awesome, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and when we're going through your program today, I know that you're gonna talk about your space and we don't have to jump to that right now, but you have an amazing space and I'm excited to, to show those <laughs> images and let you share about that. So I'm not gonna keep talking because you guys aren't here to hear me. So I'm gonna turn this over to Rod and uh, let, <laughs> you, uh, let you teach and do what you do. Sounds great. So I can't tell you how excited I am to give you this program because um, it's really at the core of who I am. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about is the purpose we have as photographers, how to find that, and then how to hone in on that, create products from that, and create a style from that. So, and that's yep. kind of what, it's only taken me, you know, 25 years to figure it out, <laughs> just, but just that I'm long. finally there, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe, at least closer to where I was. Cause I know when you start out, you're like, I don't, you know, you just kind of, follow the crowd or, you know, you're just not really sure and you have to experiment and do all these things. And so hopefully by talking today and seeing what, what I'm seeing, you'll find some peace in that mm -hmm. for yourself that you can take with you and develop your own look and your own style and whatever. So, right. And I think it's also good to note before you jump into your program that you've gone through a lot of styles oh, and yeah. a lot of phases <laughs> I've tried you know, it in all. your 25 years. So for everybody that's tuning in and listening to us today, you know, what Rod's presenting on today is phase... Yeah, 97. <laughs> 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 uh, I've done bunny rabbits. I've done um, <laughs> yeah. the white on white with the ladder and the numbers and, yeah. you know, the things, you know what yes. I mean? The cutouts, the, the things. I've done them. I've done them. And so what happens is, is that, that just the... You know, you open those opportunities, you learn, you educate yourself, but at some point something feels like this is truly who you are and it right. sticks. Yes. You know, a lot of those things you do and then three or four months later you're like, this is just not 
sticking. Yeah. And so you're on to the next thing. And that's part of being an artist. Absolutely. Absolutely it is. So yeah, Absolutely. All right. So let's jump into your science of beauty. Yay. Okay. So my program is called the science of beauty. And I know those two things sound like they don't belong together, mm -hmm. but they really do. And so there's been a lot of research and a lot of study. And I've spent years studying this, this topic. First, I'm going to explain to you what we're going to be talking about. So we're going to talk about the understand beauty and what, it, what beauty really is and what it is not. I'm going to talk about how to do a facial analysis and also talk about how to ultimately, you know, how we can use our tools like pose, lens, light, science uh, to show everybody's individual unique beauty that they have. So um, ultimately, what we want to do as photographers, obviously, is to build confidence and let them see themselves in a positive light. I really feel this is our mission in life, or mine anyway, right. is that we have a huge impact on people that we don't even realize um, sometimes. So I'm just going to start out by a little bit of my work. Uh, this is what I do for families, um, some studio work and some work in the home uh, for a lot of people is what I do. Um, and then for high school seniors, high school senior photography. <laughs> but, it, you know, I know we don't have time to read all these comments, but you'll see that what people are saying in high school senior photography is they really appreciate the encouragement and the creativity and how they feel when they're done. Um, those are some of the important things that we're trying to accomplish with these teenagers. And um, so, and then even in my high school senior market, I've been in introducing uh, a style of photography, more of fine art kind of a look, you know what I mean? That's something that's different and unique, but feels really right for who I am because I, I you know, I've studied art a lot and I, I love like John Singer Sargent and all those things, but I, but I also like fashion and all that. So I'm, for me, this feels really natural to mesh fashion with old world together into one is kind of what I'm working towards or what I'm um, delving into, so. Because you definitely had an old world style oh, yeah. before yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's always been there, but I didn't incorporate the more modern, fresh posing with it, yeah. you know what I mean, and combine those two worlds together, and then, because those were canvases, and then have a product that finishes it off, and so for these, it's fine art. Yeah. Papers, you know what I mean, to finish this off, to give it the complete look, so all the stages, so um, definitely all those things. So, all right, so why am I so passionate about this topic? Because of these four beautiful children of mine. <laughs> I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I have four daughters. And so honestly, this is my passion. You know what I mean? I see what they go through. I know what I went through when I was a kid too, you yep. know, and stuff. And, and your self-confidence kind of gets beat down with social media, all the things. And so, um, so that's what I'm trying to accomplish. So you're going to see a recurring theme with all my daughters, and that is this picture here with a Jeep. So yeah. every one of them <laughs> will be in, in with me with some kind of a Jeep. <laughs> There's another Jeeps one we're on cool. Jeeping. This one owns a Jeep. And so and she just got married, which is awesome. And so I was able to do her bridal portrait. But that is what I do and why I do what I do. Because I understand the value of what we do and the impact that we have on them. So if I believe so strongly in this, I should take the time to really understand what I'm doing. Not just, you know, oh, I, you know, oh she looks good now but understand why does she look good now? Mm -hmm. Why did I, why does he look so much better in this picture than this picture? You know, the lighting's similar, but, or the lens is similar, but but they don't look the same. Yeah, you know what I mean? It looks so much better this in this image. And why did that happen? So that's what I've been studying. So just to throw a few statistics out there to let you know, you know, most, this is from Dove, only about 4% of women uh, consider themselves beautiful. 11% of girls are comfortable using the word beautiful. And, and 72% feel a tremendous pressure to be beautiful. So I know this obviously with four, uh, four daughters. I understand all those things. So, so this is what you have to ask yourself. How many of us think that it's our job to capture the unique and the best light of each person we photograph? I think we would all agree on that. So why don't we delve into what it means and use the tools that, are, uh, that we have as photographers and our skill as a photographer to, being, to bring out the best in each person that we photograph. So, um, for example, this young lady um, is in a wheelchair. And so a lot of people had a, they called several photographers and most of them were like, I can't do this, wow. you know? And obviously I donated it, you know yeah. what I mean? And, um, and was able to capture great images of her. And we used her on the cover of one of our senior brochures. Mm -hmm. Not because she's handicapped, because the images are beautiful and so is she. She is the sweetest, most amazing person ever. Anyway, she has her own thing that she does now. It's really amazing. 
So I know this is kind of a weird graphic that's up in front of you right now, <laughs> but um, what this is is an actual study that was done um, by Dr. Marquardt. And so he took these images, which today no one would get to this point, you know, of, of facial whatever. But as you can see, the first five, six images on the top row are pretty similar. Mm -hmm. So he sent this out to people from all different countries, different ages, different ethnicities, um, different backgrounds, and said, rate these images, you know, and he put them in a random order, and he said, rate these images from the most beautiful to, you know, not the most beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so um, when the results came back, 97% of them put them in this order. So that tells us there's something else going on, more than just how, you know, we're programmed to see um, beauty in a certain way, which I'm going to change your opinion on what beauty is. Okay, so our brains all see beauty the same way. Well, if that's true, then we should be able to understand that and use our stuff with it. So again, I got this information. A lot of this, I stu I've been studying this for years. Um, so Dr. Barcourt on beauty analysis, and there's a funny, funny PBS special called The Human Face with uh, John Cleese and the University of Nebraska Medical Center has some great computations also. So two key factors basically are what is determining what beauty is. So the first one is health. Okay, how healthy does that person look? And symmetry and balance equates to that also. So, um, so I'm gonna lose the word beauty for a while, okay? Sounds because I, it is not beauty that we're looking at. What we're really looking at is health. And so what we're looking at on a, that's why they rate those all the same, is we're looking for the healthiest of our species, is okay. what our brains are saying um, to find that, just we're programmed to do that, to find the healthiest of our species. So, um, and that will keep us going for many generations, of right. course. You know what I mean? You understand how that all works. So it's just a, a, a basic need, a basic way that we all see. No matter if you're four years old or you're 97 years old, it doesn't matter. So what are the factors to say this person is healthy? Well, some things are like dewy skin, um, highlighted cheekbones, dark limbo rings. And people are like, what is a limbo <laughs> ring? <laughs> I, I was doing the same thing. <laughs> what the heck is it a limbo <laughs> ring? Well, that's the dark part of your eye, you know what I mean, that goes okay. around the circular, not the pupil. And then you've got your iris, and then you've got your limbo rings. So okay. as we age, our limbo rings become lighter and not as pronounced and dark as they are. So, hmm, <laughs> interesting to know, because right? as a photographer, <laughs> not just using Photoshop, but using our tools of lighting, how can we enhance these things, right? So dark mm -hmm. limbal rings, full uh, lips, tousled hair, symmetry and balance, you know, how can we do these things? Well, the makeup artist obviously can do part of that, you right. know, for females. Um, so, you know, they can give them the goalie skin, the highlighted cheekbones and all the things. But beyond that, as a photographic artist, what, we, what can we do to enhance health? Well, it's lighting. You know, we can give them that healthy, glowy type of skin, and we can also arrange hair. So I am Franz, your hair guy, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> and I love doing hair. <laughs> so anyway, but you know, here's a typical lighting scenario, you know, like, you know, one umbrella, you know, off to the side or whatever. And so these, neither one of these images have been enhanced by any means, you know, like retouched or anything but she looks much more healthy, glowy, dewy, all the things in this image. So we're gonna kind of delete that word beauty for a while here and talk about healthy and how we can make a person unique and as healthy looking as possible. Okay, so this lighting is called clamshell lighting. So it's just one beauty dish above and then either reflector or some kind of a, a you know, curved light underneath them mm -hmm. is, is how I create that clamshell lighting. Here's just a quick lighting setup of what it looks like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then here's some examples of cl uh, clamshell lighting. But you'll see that they all have this kind of glowing look and a lot of times I'll use a couple kickers in the background yep. to enhance that glow and that three-dimensional look to the image. So am I talking like really, really, really so, fast? So question for you <laughs> um, to let everybody like breathe and catch up with you here. Um, that eye lighter that goes underneath, how close is that to your subject? It is just out of camera range. Okay. So you can just, it's just barely out of camera range. So, okay. yep, if, if you were to go one inch below that, you would see it. So and once in a while, I have to Photoshop it out, but it's <laughs> mostly out of the picture. <laughs> so, um, but you can tell the difference, obviously. You know, you've got oh, yeah. your traditional lighting, and then you've got your clamshell lighting, you know. And the, the we didn't do, there's no, like, makeup changes or nothing. I think we did her lips. 
But other than that, it's just the lighting is different. You can notice the beautiful catch light underneath mm -hmm. and how it does enhance her limbo rings. Yep. You know, so I know that's weird. But anyway, <laughs> so just more examples of that. And, you know, I got to throw in funny crap. And I'm a Star Trek -y <laughs> person. So, you know, I'm totally feeling emotions of consistent with a conventionally attractive appearance. So, <laughs> symmetry. This is where it gets down to the you know sciency part of what we do. Yep. So and how it works on the human face. So what's interesting is the golden ratio, you know, discovered in the 1500s or whatever it was, you know, of one to 1.68 has been fascinating to me. It's not only you know in nature everywhere that you see it, but it's also in the human body, which is very very fascinating. So to me, because if you take a person's um, body, and if they're symmetrically correct, the 1.168 works. Your hand to your elbow is the size of your hand to your, and the size of your wrist to your elbow is 1.68. The, your phalanges, this one is 1.68 of this one, and this, the middle one is 1.168 1 1 of this one. Hmm. So it's in nature, it's in everything that we do. Like it's programmed to see the golden ratio. It's in, our, it's in our bodies, it's in our face. Um, that ratio also applies to the human face. That the, one, the golden rule is also there. So it's on a, on a very primal instinct of us, we are programmed to see huh. everything with the golden ratio. Isn't that fascinating? That is really fascinating. I know, it's so weird. I'm looking at the <laughs> graphic on the right right now and that, that's yeah. so interesting. Isn't yeah. it interesting? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so... Crazy, I don't know. Anyway, so this kind of stuff blows me away. So how, how does this all apply, right? Okay, so now the golden ratio is on the face, balance and symmetry, healthy, all the things. Well, the first thing you do is when a client comes in is that I do is I study them in a very flat, natural light. You know, not in a creepy, weird way. <laughs> like, I Let stare them stare down. To you for yeah. a minute. Let me stare into your eyes. Okay, because I was pretty weird. sure they're going to leave <laughs> um, and walk out on me. So what I do is, is that we just have a natural conversation, you know what I mean? So I have them fill out a pre-questionnaire. I learned some things. We're just having a conversation and so forth. And what I'm noticing about them is they're, I'm, I'm actually looking for their strong features, you know what I mean? Okay. What's the strongest features that they have, you know? And how symmetrical are they? And, and I want to feature the strong features. So, um, so uh, literally, I can do it in 30 seconds. I can tell you what your strong side is and whatever, because pretty much everything follows that. So if one eye is larger, cheekbones are maybe a little bit higher, the lips are a little bit fuller on that side, and whatever. So I'm like, okay, that's where we're going. Now, so, do you, not to interrupt you, but do you take your client's input on that? Because I would guess that they probably have an opinion of what their strongest features and stuff are. They do, and what's interesting is, is that um, people, they know too. Yeah. So you'll notice how they part their hair. So how girls will part their hair really determines, because they know if I part my hair on this side and it goes on this way, that I'm gonna draw more attention to this side of my face where it's parted, where, where there might be hair covering part of my face on this side, and they don't even know why they part their hair that way. Mm -hmm. And then, they, then, then sometimes I'll explain to them, you know what I mean, this is your strong side of your face, and they're like, Oh, that makes total <laughs> sense. <laughs> yeah. So, and I never say anything negative. We never go to the, you know, this is the weak side of your face, or these right. features are droopy. You know, <laughs> no, we yeah. don't. That's no. That is not what we do. What what we want to do is build people up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And show the best of who they are. You know, not in just their facial analysis, but in all of them. You know what I mean? So. Um, I find out about what they've done for the community and what they've accomplished and what their goals are and all those things and that I just roll that all into this right. building of confidence, of course. And this is just one more tool. So I just study their face, figure out where we're going, and, um, and it's interesting a lot of many athletes have um, very symmetrical faces because what happens is if you have a symmetrical face, you um, are using both sides of your body equally. So that's why a lot of athletes have symmetrical faces is because they're, they have this ability to use their right and lefts and whatever and makes them more athletic. Weird huh. crap that I love to share with you. I know, huh. am I like Cliff Clavin? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't make that comparison around, no. <laughs>
<laughs> so I know there's some single guys in the room, <laughs> yeah. and I'm gonna let you know this. So you know, next time you're at the bar, just say this to you know to that gal next to you. Just say your in inner ocular spacing is proportionally correct for your face. That's a good pickup line. That's a good pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it works every time. <laughs> so, but we need to know those things. We need to know those proportions and understand that. So, beauty is really the quality or combination of qualities um, or characteristics that evokes an emotion um, and a combination of positive emotion and a high degree of attraction. So, we don't know what beauty is yet. We haven't cracked the code. We don't know what it is. So these are just some factors into it. And so um, there are no absolutes in anything, of course, you right. know what I mean? But this certainly is going to help us. So we really need to have a good understanding of pose, light, and create symmetry and balance, of course. So I can't stress this enough. It is, you have to have a foundational knowledge of what you're seeing in front of you first and how to light it properly first before you can manipulate it and kind of like, okay, I can take this, I totally understand like precision wise within like literally a millimeter, I can get that person's nose at the camera, see both ears exactly the same, mm -hmm. and I know how to light that, shoot that, pose that. Now that I know that, how can I take and use that to my advantage? that I will show this person in their best light. Right. So first you have to have like very precise foundational knowledge. So we understand full view, but if you look at this slide, her full view is the first one. But notice when you turn her face one way or the other, how it changes her attractiveness, mm -hmm. right? Her healthy appearance, yep. you know what I mean? Changes by turning her face one way or the other. Right. So in some, and I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> so sometimes like I have these rules, like, okay, this is the strong part of their face and this is gonna look better, and blah, blah, blah. That's I've done the facial analysis and I'll go shoot it. And I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't look good. Yeah. I go do it the other way and I'm like, that does look better. <laughs> yeah. So this isn't a hundred percent true of every time, but be cognizant of it when you're creating images. Is this the best I can do for them? Am I making, putting them in the best light that I possibly can? Right. And so, and helping them see themselves um, you know, in the best light. So um, again, head tips make a difference. Look at the change in how she looks and how she um, appears in front of the camera just by a, a two inches, what a difference it makes. The, the change in the neck is just staggering. It's staggering, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, mm -hmm. the length of her neck, the change of it, everything yep. is just completely different. Um, so again, head tips, up and down. What does that do to the face? How does that change things? And what message does it send? by doing that, you know, by those camera angles or by those chin tips, what does that do? Obviously the middle one's correct for most situations. So again, what's another factor? Camera height. These are all tools that are in our box that we have as photographers to build confidence in people. So high once in a while, I prefer eye contact actually. I know a lot of us were taught to shoot, you know, a foot or two above their eyes, but I actually like to shoot right at um, camera height because uh, I have daughters. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want them to, high looks pretty good most of the time and I like it and that lighting looks really nice on that one and everything. So once in a while I'll go a little bit high, but not very high. I'd, I'd rather go more straight on because I, I feel, I want to empower women and make them look powerful and beautiful and strong. And so I don't want to go real high on the camera, you know, maybe just a few inches yeah. uh, higher than their eyes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so here, sorry. Before you jump into this here. <laughs> so if you're um, watching along and you do have questions for Rod, make sure and put them in the chat and we will relay those to him when the time is appropriate here as he's going along. So And we're doing okay? You. We're doing okay on time? You're, you're doing things. great. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So just let me, when I'm done with, don't let me go too long. I don't know. I got a lot to say. But I'm so passionate about it, obviously, and I'm talking really fast. But... Um, I, and I know it's just kind of a brief highlights of all of these things and you know, you'll have to go back and study these things for some people and for some people this may be very basic knowledge, but we, we need to have these foundational things. We have to yes. understand what broad lighting is um, and how it affects the face and who you should photograph in broad light and who you shouldn't photograph in broad light. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, what, what can understanding broad lighting can do? If you have someone with a narrow face, how can broad lighting 
and turning their head a little bit, rebalance and re-symmetrize their face to put them in the best light. So right. here's a great example of it. You know what I mean? Face directly at the camera or face turned slightly away from the camera. How much more symmetrical her face looks right. by just simply turning her face a little bit. Yeah. You know? So understanding those things are going to help us so much. So, and again, the, the other is true. Short lighting. When do we use that? You know? When is yeah. that a... a um, appropriate to use, you know? So again, short light is, I'm not going to explain what short light is. Short light's that. Okay. <laughs> so again, short lighting versus broad lighting, what situations to use it in? You know, what is the most flattering for that person? What can I do to bring out the best of them? So again, for a slightly round face, you know, short lighting is a, is a beautiful lighting for that type of a face. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with a narrow face or something wrong with a round face. Yeah. Neither, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying, how can I make that face look the best it can possibly be? That person, bring them out. That's, that's why they're hiring me. You know right. what I mean? They Absolutely. want me to make them the best they, they are, you know? Absolutely. So I'm not saying one's wrong or one's not, you know what I mean? Or whatever, yeah. so you get And that. we do have a question that came <laughs> in, if I can interrupt you Absolutely. real quick. So in your head tilt example, um, is it the center image that was considered correct? In exactly, okay. yep, center right. would be correct. But if you're trying to make a, you know, if you're trying to do like a mood or a message, you know, the one that was on the right where the head was tipped back like this, that's gonna give you more of that, you know, I have an attitude kind of a look, yep. you know what I mean? And the other one's going to give you more of a, I don't, I'm sad look, you yeah. know? And the one in the middle is like, correct, yes. you know? So just what do you, what, what message do you want to convey? Understand right. that y what you do also has a message mm -hmm. through posing, through lighting, through color, all the things send a message, right. you know? And so we want to enhance that message is what we do. So what's another tool in our toolbox? Our lenses, right. okay? so. You know, this is a, a 50 millimeter lens and how it affects the face. Now, I'm not saying you can't use a 50 millimeter on a face, but look at how different a 50 millimeter versus an 85 versus a 200 millimeter lens mm -hmm. looks on this face. Now, the 200 millimeter for her is probably the best, but that doesn't mean it's for everybody. And it's actually, right. it's not, you know what I mean? So 200 millimeters is not the right lens for everybody. So. I actually, yes, I am a geek and a nerd. So <laughs> I actually measured, like I didn't just visually look, but I actually measured what is this doing to the face? What is this lens actually doing? I want to know right. mm -hmm. because I don't want to just like be like, ah, I think that looks good. Right. I want to know like, okay, is it really look good? Did it, did this really resematize her face a little bit, you right. know, and see it in the best light? And it's like, yes, it did. It widened her. You know, she started at 27, 28, and now she's at 29.5, 25. Mm -hmm. Weird. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> Isn't that strange? Yeah, that but is. that that her facial length didn't change, but her, the width of her face did change. So I was able to show her again in the best light. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are like, you know, because uh, they take pictures with their phones, you mm -hmm. know, selfies, and they're, you know, that's basically a 50 millimeter lens. And so um, they're wondering why they look like this now, you know? It's right. like, yeah, this is how you really look. This is how you look to the rest of the world right. is this, not that, what you're seeing behind your iPhone. Yeah. And so hmm. um, I want people to see out of the camera when I show it to them and go, oh my gosh, that is great. And I probably have a slide in here about it, so maybe I'll just skip past it. But I had a mom say to me one time, she goes, um, my daughter, during her session, leaned over to me and whispered in my ear. She goes, she never talks about anything. And she goes, Mom, I really am beautiful. Wow, that's like, powerful. Yeah, I mean yeah. that, she goes, that has changed her, like her whole, how her stance, how she feels about herself, what she thinks she can accomplish, what she can do in life. It's a big it deal. Is. It, it is. It's a huge deal what we do, and we can't take that lightly, I feel. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm so passionate about this, and so and why I've spent so much time studying this, is because I am that passionate about yeah. it, you know? It's ridiculous. So, um, <laughs> that was probably a slide in here, anyway. So, do you remember when everybody told us we should put the small eye to the, you know, like, if you're trying to resymmetrize eyes, put the small eye closest to the camera. I, I remember that and put very the clearly. Big eye behind yep. because that will help the symmetry mm -hmm. on the face. Yep. Well, that, I was, so I put that to the, the test, you know, like everything, even when I was, you know, in art classes and stuff like that, they'd say, you can't do this. And I'm like, 
will watch me. <laughs> <laughs> Who made that rule? Yeah, I want to know that one. because yeah. I'm going to try it anyway. <laughs> forget it. So the same thing with that. You know, I'm like, well, why did they make that rule? Does it really work? And so, and it probably does work in some instances. But I think that rule was made when people were using large format cameras and mm -hmm. wide lenses. Yeah. And yes, the between doing that and a wide lens, that would symmetrize the face. But today, we use long lenses, so that does not impact that. So why would we put what, what I would consider the weaker side of the face, light it, showcase it over the more the stronger side of their face? You know, and so I put that to the test. And so here's a a, a great example. Where's her before? Sorry, it was in there somewhere. Anyway, you'll see somewhere <laughs> that her actually her her smaller eye is the one would be on. My, my, my logo, that's small eye to the camera mm -hmm. and large eye behind. The other one is strong eye to the camera and small eye huh. away from the camera, farther away. So which one looks more symmet symmetrical? Uh, definitely the left. Yeah. yeah, and it's a 200 millimeter lens and that's why. So by using pose, also by lifting that eye up higher, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've tricked your brain into seeing those eyes as basically about the same size. Hmm. So That's by amazing. lifting it higher, if I would have done it at the same height, that this effect wouldn't be as strong, but by tipping it a little bit and doing that, I've now made those eyes look, or at least in your brain, to be more symmetrical. Wow, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, isn't that ridiculous? So um, again, you know, a nose. How do you make their nose look better? So it's all in, you know, pose and camera angle. You don't want that nose touching their lip, you know, that only accentuates things, you know. So if you pose them, camera angle them correctly, you know, look at how much more, um, you know, symmetrical she looks. So mm -hmm. same thing. Yeah. You can take, you know, turning the nose this way or this way or putting it direct to the camera. What a difference it can make in an image. These are just things you put in your brain so um, to do that. So I also love to work with hair. Like I said, I am Franz. <laughs> <laughs> and I have so much fun working. Like I, you know, yeah, it's pretty sad. But yeah, like if you were ready to go to a prom or something, I got you covered. <laughs> You're doing updos at oh, the Oh, absolutely. This year? Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Yeah, I can totally do it. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Awesome updos. Okay. So anyway, her mom is actually a hairstylist. And I've known this, I've photographed her since she was a baby. And so she's totally comfortable with me working with her hair. And I can talk all about, you know, like ask permission, you know, da 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 da, all the things, of course, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you know where my heart's at. So right. you know that I'm, yeah. you know, not. And what, super a, what a change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So look at the difference from, you know, the hair being like this. And she had no idea I was going to do this, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I just asked permission and I say, can I just try something, you know, like at, toward the end of your session and just try something fun with it? It's not permanent. Uh, you know, it's, this will fall away and it'll be fine. Yep. And so and it normally does, you know what I mean? So um, so this is my, yeah, one of my updos that I do. Um, I also do, you know, like I put lights in hairs. I'll restyle their hair. I took her hair and took the back of her hair and put it to the front. So those are actually, she's got super long hair. So there are hair ends that I gave her bangs, mm -hmm. you know, so oh, or fun. half updos and stuff like that. So you can have fun with it. But what you're doing by doing that is you're drawing the viewers attention to where you want it to go. Look at it as a leading line, right? It's like, I want to draw them to this feature, this eye, this, this side of the face, this cheekbone, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling you where I want you to go. So I'm telling you where I want you to look, what I want you to look at. And look at all the difference within that session. Yeah. You know, <laughs> in those five images, it's incredible. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. She's awesome. She's so <laughs> sweet. So again, just examples of hair and how you can draw the attention of the viewer to where you want them to go. And yes, I know, I got a lot of hair slides. <laughs> <laughs> Very passionate about uh, hair. About, uh, I like hair. Okay, anyway. <laughs> so anyway, so beauty's still a mystery, as I said. We haven't figured it out completely. Uh, we're just, these are just some clues. This is just helping us kind of figure it out and get closer to that. So, um, so hey, I'm doing really good. You so, are doing great. Yeah. So a couple questions for you. Um, you said when the, the your senior or your subject gets there that you're taking about 30 seconds. Yeah. How many times do you retool during the session of that initial thought process? Um, I would say probably 
25% of the time I retool. Okay. So I'm typically on. It's weird because you once you start doing facial analysis, you're going to be like obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> it's so sad. It's like when you find light and you understand light, you don't yep. see the world the same anymore. Right. You know, and it's the same with facial analysis. You're sitting at dinner at a dinner table and you're like not creepily, hopefully, <laughs> again, but you are. You're like, oh, that's their song side. That's this. Oh, that's a great feature. I understand yep. this and this. You know what I mean? And you're like looking around, you know, walking and seeing, and you're just, you're just, you're, you're just seeing the world differently now. Yeah. You know? Well, and that, like you were saying earlier, that becomes part of your tool set. If you're able to do that analysis so quickly that you don't even really know you're doing it, yeah. that is adding to the whole level of the experience. You're, it's not taking up your mind space, it's just something you're doing along the way, and you're adding to the, the confidence of that high school senior or that family member. And that, and, and I'm gonna mirror and say exactly what you said, there's nothing more important than, you know, in photography than to create um, a strong uh, experience yeah. and to, to build confidence, especially in this day and age. Oh my goodness, yeah. with all the social media pressures and all the things and, Whatever, you know, there's such a strong, you know, influence on, on guys and girls both yep. to achieve these sometimes impossible um, uh, expectations. You know, expectations. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And somebody told me this a long time ago in a seminar, because I've been to a... A few? <laughs> just a couple. <laughs> yeah, just a few. You know, been a couple places, you know, yeah. one or two places. So, yeah, I've spent so much time on my education and invested in that, which... Again, there's a reason for it, you know what I mean? There's a reason for that is because I am passionate about what I do and I want to be the best I can be for others, right. you know, so, um, and, and encourage them. And also, um, I, this one person said this in, a, in a, one of the seminars was, you can never, and I know you've heard this too, is you can never separate the experience from the photograph. Those two are completely intertwined. Mm -hmm. yeah. You could have the most beautiful photograph technically perfect like everything is correct yep. but the photographer was mechanical and didn't talk and didn't encourage and just did the things yep. right and you you can't disassociate those two right. you think well the that feeling was, is there yeah that yep. was like boring and I was stiff and bored and yeah. whatever uncomfortable uncomfortable yeah and that's how you when you look at the photograph that's what you see yeah so it all goes hand in hand you know you you use your technical excellence but you also use your communication skills and and truly, truly, how to uh, truly, truly, kind of falling in love with your client. Yeah. You know, not in a weird, creepy way. Again, yeah. <laughs> I say that a lot, <laughs> but um, but I don't. You know, I you really do. You know, like if you really care about that person and um, really, truly want to see them in the best light, then you will do what you can, use the tools that you have at your disposal to create that experience and those images for that person. And so we were talking earlier and it's, you can, when you look at um, another photographer's work, you can really see the level of caring mm -hmm. that they have, yeah. you know what I mean? And the passion that they have, it just naturally comes through in their work, yeah. you know, that it's like, ah, oh, yeah, I can totally, I can see the heart of the photographer is what I'm trying to say, I guess. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Very fascinating. And, and I wanted to show you the comment that is up on the board here. So thanks, Todd. Uh, we think he's pretty darn amazing too. <laughs> so, um, Thank you. <laughs> so to move into um, your next segment, which I'm guessing you're kind of approaching that yes, now. Yes, I'm getting close to that, um, yes. So I was lucky enough when you were, I don't know if it was at the beginning of your, your cinematic color toning or where I came into the, the, the discussion with you, but I can remember a couple years ago talking about a new fine art line yes. that you were wanting to get into and the yeah. products that you wanted to do with that and the style and everything. And again, as yep. an innovator, you're constantly reinventing yourself, reinventing yeah. style, light, um, toning. So um, explain that process to us. Explain your thought process of the beginning of that and how you got to the point of these amazing images that are on the wall behind us. Oh, thank you. Well, so... <laughs> You know, the world changes. Like we talked about earlier, you know, you go, you go through all these different changes, but it has to be natural for who you are still, mm -hmm. even though it is. So as I'm doing installations in my clients' homes, I'm looking at their homes and going, these paintings are not really starting to fit in anymore. Mm -hmm. Clients' homes are becoming more modern, a lot yeah. of white woodwork, a lot of white walls or gray walls, and you know, that painterly gold frame 
you know, big chunky gold frame on canvas or whatever is not really fitting their decor anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Things are changing. So how can I evolve with that but stay true to who I am yeah. and what I do? So um, so that's when I kind of started getting into, like, well, I can't. <laughs> there, what do I do? Bright, colorful images? No, that's yeah. not who I am. Uh -huh. But it, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just not who I am, yep. it, and, and that's totally great. Um, or, you know, what other style? You know, is it white on white? Or is, what is it, you know what I mean, that's going to fit in these homes? Yep. And for me, I. I found this, which is the cinematic look mm -hmm. to the image, but also putting it on fine art paper, which gives us that real modern appeal with yep. a really slim black frame. Yep. And then it looks like something you would see in a museum. Correct. In a modern museum. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> that makes sense. Exactly. <laughs> Not sitting next to a Rembrandt, <laughs> necessarily, yep. but still has that feel, but has this modern approach to it. So the approach is, is that it's old world lighting, the Rembrandt style lighting. It's, um, you know, timeless, but it's quirky mm -hmm. and it's odd and it's funky. It's kind of like putting fashion with Rembrandt and kind of going smashing those two people <laughs> together. That's a cool, cool thought. Right yeah. There. yeah. And then mm -hmm. just you're using both of those tools that you have, which is very natural for me doing high school seniors and, you know, my love of art, you know, smashing those two things together and then coming up with a style or a line that really fits who you are. Yeah. So that's kind of what happened with me. <laughs> so as long as we're talking about who you are, would this be an okay spot that we could talk about your studio sure. a little bit? Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, so you have an amazing space that you work in, yeah. in Sioux Falls. <laughs> um, it was a bank, yes. is that correct? That's right. <laughs> so tell, tell us about your space, and we're going to put a few images up on the screen so everybody can, can so follow this along. Is the, I, this is, obviously, this is my building. I own this property, of course. Um, it's in downtown Sioux Falls. This is our gallery. Um, when you first walk in the door, um, the, the door's in the back there. And so that's what you see when you come in to our, to our gallery space. Um, and so you're not supposed to fall in love with your building, but I kind of have. And <laughs> I think anyway, a lot of people have, <laughs> it's me like, being one of them. <laughs> <laughs> like it had carpet and drop down ceilings and you know, all the things, you know? Yeah. And so, but I went in and brought it back to its, you know, old, awesome look. Even the previous owner didn't know what was underneath the floors. Wow. I found out. So a <laughs> bunch of asbestos tile. I found out. <laughs> and so you're really, stuff. you know, with, with that space, and I know everybody watching right now is completely envious. I would say 100% <laughs> of everybody out there. Um, that really does set a tone. Absolutely. Your personality, your your appearance, your dress, your um, your your words, the the studio, the the art, everything goes together. Absolutely. And it always has, with you, in my yeah. opinion. Um, so I think that is uh, a really a good thing to note as we're talking about everything, because you, you all of your things fit into a style, and they yeah. always have. But the style has evolved. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's evolved, but it's. Yeah, it's changed, but yep. it's still there. It's yep. still true at my core of who I am. Right. Now, in the beginning, it wasn't, of course. You know what I mean? So I was still doing the Novoli and Dynamite poses, <laughs> you know, and the <laughs> crazy stuff. All the things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, did any, I was charging $8 for an 8x10 when I first started, wow. and that was about $8 too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, now it looks like changed. a heck of a bargain now. Yeah. So um, let's talk about your, your color toning and get into into the weeds a little bit with that. Absolutely. So like like you're saying, it's about brand, you know, and about um, how you're, you know, keeping everything consistent. And I say this to people too, is you don't have to have a big old fancy studio to do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, you can work, you know, this same thing by going to the client's home too. You know, it's by the way you dress, by your portfolio that you bring in, by the style, by the words, you know, elevate everything that you have at your disposal and you can do the same thing, yep. you know? So it doesn't have to be a physical building either. It's, it's very possible to do other ways, so. Mm -hmm. and, and especially within the last couple of years, the, the timeline of uh, brick and mortar or not brick and mortar yes. has ex yeah, you know, gone very very fast. Yeah, you know, I talked to one of my clients the other day, and they've got a, you know, huge design company, mm -hmm. you know, and um, 
95 percent of the people are still at home and they still have that big space yeah <laughs> like they don't even know why <laughs> 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 so I, I I love movies okay so I yep. I managed movie theaters for a long time when I was you know first out of uh, high school and stuff, so I managed many, many movie theaters uh, and closed down a lot of movie theaters anyway. <laughs> um, but so that's why my love, love of art, love of fashion, love of movies. I still see uh, two, to, two to three movies a week, so it's ridiculous. Okay. So um, I actually proposed to my wife in a movie theater. When really? we were at the movies, a big slide came up on the screen and said, Heidi, will you marry me? <laughs> the ushers come down with the rings and the flowers, and she's crying, and I'm like, and your answer is? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Seemed like a lifetime, but right. obviously it worked out. We're together. So it's been great. So um, so in a movie, you know, they use a lot of what I would, you know, depending on the movie, of course, but a lot of cinematic lighting. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a dip, deep dish um, uh, Octobox. Okay. Kind of has that real Rembrandt-y cinematic look to it and um, that kind of tone to it. So this is kind of the lighting pattern that we're talking about right here yeah. um, that that creates. But the other part of um, cinematic is the color theory behind cinematic photography okay. and um, filmmaking. And so it's color theory. So what I love, the movies that I love the most are the ones that have this, what they call complementary colors, where the skin is warm, the person is warm, but what's behind them is cool. And it's yeah. one more element, you know, we can use light to separate, we can use focus to separate, but we can also use color to yeah. separate, you know, our subject from the background and create that dimension and depth in the images. Yeah. So, um, so I love this idea of color theory and how you can, how you can use that um, to create a mood, a style, a story, all the things. Okay, so this is cinematic, just a couple examples of cinematic toning, and obviously you see some behind you, yep. of course, of what that looks like, again, before and after. Whoops, why is that there? Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're done, folks. Thanks, yeah, yeah. Thanks for showing Thanks for joining us. That was yeah. my program. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate all of you. <laughs> Sorry. And so this is before and after with cinematic toning. And see, that's still in there. And frequency separation retouching is another part of this editing and beauty. And the reason I say this is because what frequency separation editing is, is what I've been talking about all along, which is authentic, real health slash beauty mm -hmm. is what, and unique is what I want to bring out of people. So I want to use their um, their skin, their origin, you know, their authentic person of who they are and just remove the temporary things. Okay. So when you're using um, high frequency rig touching and editing is you're doing that. You're replacing their skin with their own skin and this is way beyond patch tool, okay? Right. <laughs> yep. There's a lot of problems with patch tool. So you'll grab a piece of skin, you'll move it over and you're like, ooh, those pores are bigger than these pores. Yep. Or you move this skin over here and you're like, oh, the, they didn't blend together like they should have or now right. it's dark and light and there's just all these issues and you're spending all this time. Once you learn how to do this, this is actually faster and easier once you understand how to do it. And we won't get an understanding today, but I just right. want to introduce the concept and maybe just a quick example of how to do it. Um, you'll see that it's faster and easier and it's much more authentic um, and real and true and keeping the, the pores and the things and all of that. And I think, I think there's a real message in that, you know, that says this is truly who you yeah. are. You know, the things that I've taken out are temporary. You know, they're just, well, and I think, you know, on a little bit of a side journey here, because um, I know we can do that, in a time <laughs> where, yeah, in a time where, you know, I think that there's not a lot of um, real, yeah, unfortunately, um, you know, people want to be genuine, yeah, you know, and they don't want to be smooth, nope. you know, and filtered up and all the things, you know, and, and I think that that's amazing and how you explain that is perfect, you know, you're, you're replacing the temporary, yeah. you know, and keeping, you know, what's, what's there and I think that's amazing. I, I can see that resonating very clearly and very high level importance to clients. Yeah, yeah. it is. And I let them know that this is going to be you, the real you, what we're doing, you know, this is, you know, truly who you are, you know, mm -hmm. the, the thing that does little things here and there, well, they're all just temporary things. So yeah. that's all I'm removing, basically. So, yeah. um, and we're not, you know, doing the widen their eyes and, you know, 
doing the things that they're based, none of that stuff. So yeah, yeah. Um, this is just who, who they, these are just temporary little things that we take care of. So again, this is before and after. This is with high frequency re editing and with um, color toning together. Um, it's still who she is, the lighting's the same. It's just been enhanced um, slightly. So anyway, that's my thing now. We've got time to show them how to do it, right? Yep, yep. We've got I about five minutes. Question. Someone wants to know how to get the natural look. Let so me yep. get to the point of making you know, like it's our artistic choices instead of a mistake. Right? Okay. Say that question again. That was <laughs> really <laughs> a big <laughs> question. <laughs> um, I try the toning, but it never looks right to me. I end up going back to more natural look. How did you get to the point of making knowing it's an art for artistic choice instead of a mistake? Yeah, I mean, it does. It has to feel natural and real, you know, to you and to the person. And you can take it too far, you know. You can take it too far or not enough or, you know, where do you find that ground, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, cause I'm, probably because I'm offline. <laughs> it doesn't think that I own, oh, no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I can't use Photoshop because I'm not online. Um, anyway, obviously. <laughs> well, how about that? So, there, maybe it's going to stay. Okay, so, um, oh, don't do this to us. Can I go online? If, but I don't want to disconnect us. So, yeah. anyway, uh, yeah, I've got before and, uh, before and after examples, and okay. I'm just going to do those, okay, instead. So, let me give you the concept, because we've only got a few minutes anyway. So, let me give you the concept of what you're doing. What Frequency separation, retouching, and color toning, back yep. to this point here, yep. is doing is that um, you're dividing that image into several layers. So you're taking this person, you have one layer that is color, and you have another layer that's like highlights and okay. shadows. Yep. You have another layer that's texture, which is the texture of their skin. Okay. So you're dividing those up and you're working on each layer is what you're doing. So now I'm just working on the texture layer. Okay. And that's their texture of their skin. And, and then if the, if the color needs to be adjusted on that part of their face, I can move the color from the other part of their face to that part of their face. I'm working everything on separate layers okay. is what I'm doing. And that's creating that realness because it truly is who they are, you know, and just getting rid of the temporary things. And the toning thing, is what I do is, you know, now in Photoshop, it's so easy. You just hit select subject. Mm -hmm. And so you can make a layer mask and just pull out the subject. And then they can be, I use lookup tables, you know, for color toning. And so you put a warm lookup table on their skin and then make another layer with the subject out of it and use a lookup table that is cool, you know? And then, you know, then just blend, move those sliders back and forth till it's like, it looks fairly natural, you know? Like, a lot of times I will let that warm filter bleed into the background, yep. and but not the cool all the way back into the foreground again. And then that gives you that one more layer of warm and cool focus, this and this. I'm drawing you to that, I, I'm, I'm deciding what you're going to look at. Right. I'm deciding, I'm driving you to what I want you to see and what I want you to feel um, when you look at this image. You know, right. I want to give you this, sense when you look at this image, it's timeless. It's, right, um, and, and you're doing it so subtly of just of, of drawing that client exactly where you need them to yeah. be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you can see the light or you know how it was lit or how all the things or whatever, you know, that that's, that's, that's not what you want. You want it to be like you're looking at the image. You're not like trying to figure out the light, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, yeah. yeah, for sure. So I know that we have to jump off here, and I know you could probably talk for the next eight hours on this, but if people want to find you, Rod, yes. if they want to find um, you know, more information, if they want to follow along with you, where are you at? Where are all your things, your places? Well, I'm everywhere. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I thank you for that, um, but uh, I'm here. Okay, so this is me. My website is evansimages.com. My Instagram is Evans Fine Art. My Facebook has been hacked, and I have no Facebook. Okay. And um, <laughs> I can't get back on right now. Anyway, and so, and then we just started a podcast. Um, okay. It's uh, called The F Stops Here okay. uh, with Tim and Bev Walden, Monica Sigmund, and Michael Taylor. A lot of great information about some of the things we've been talking about, branding style, yep. client experience, all those kind of things. Yeah, so Absolutely. And we do have one more question, if that's okay. Oh, absolutely. Um, can you use a gradient map to do color? 
Um, I have never tried that. So um, I've used it to burn and dodge, you know, an image. Yep. I've used gradient maps to do that, but not for color toning. So for color toning, um, I use lookup tables. So, um, and you can download free ones. You can buy lookup tables. Okay. Um, uh, there's a, a, a great photographer, Glenn Dewis, from the UK um, that does military portraits. He's a, an incredible educator. Um, I would definitely look at his resources too. He's probably okay. got some great, well, I use some of his lookup tables, so. Awesome, yeah. very cool. Well, we appreciate you being with us here today so much. I mean, it's just been awesome. And I know that you sped through things. You have so <laughs> much to offer and you've always been so giving within the industry and sharing of your your talents and your time, so. Well, I've been blessed to have the same thing done for me. So many people have shared their time, their experiences, their talents with me. It's the least I can do. So yeah. I appreciate you guys and I appreciate you having me here so yeah. very Absolutely. much. It's been our pleasure. So um, if you're not following along and you haven't hit that subscribe button for the WHCC YouTube, make sure and do that now. Um, you're gonna get notified for awesome events um, like we just had today when they're gonna be going live. Um, follow along on Instagram at WHCC Pro. Um, if you have any follow-up questions, put them in the chat. We'll, uh, I, 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 can, I can find this guy. I know where he <laughs> lives and we, and we can get questions <laughs> answered. Um, and then definitely go to WHCC.com. Um, check that out, all the products, all the details, all the things. So thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you back for our next YouTube live event. Thank you.